There it is. What about volume? That's the embryo for a United States space program probably could be traced back more than a quarter century. Almost concurrent with the start of an organization that today is known as the Space Division of Rockwell International. Those first tentative steps toward conquering space occurred more than 10 years before the government created the National Aeronautics and Space Administration in 1958 to provide research into problems of flight within and without the Earth's atmosphere, and with the stipulation that activities in space should be devoted to peaceful purposes for the benefit of all mankind. Exasperation. And many chuckles. Clown car. <laughs> oh, get the astronauts here. One, two, three. Four. <laughs> it's not coming down. <laughs> Man was not created with reaction engines, so he has come to rely upon his own ingenuity. By the way, that's astronaut and Al Ward. And the of clever and sophisticated machines to carry him to his destiny in space. Space Division has been in the forefront of the space effort since the very beginning. Way back in 1947, the Aerophysics Laboratory at the Los Angeles plant of North American Aviation became a separate department. The company had been awarded an Air Force contract for development of the Navajo Intercontinental Guided Missile. The native test rocket for Navajo was flown successfully at Alamogordo, New Mexico in May of 1948. And in that same year, the aerophysics operations were moved into the former vault -E plant in Dallas. Understand now, the Navajo was not to be a space vehicle, but the development of its rocket booster and engine was one of the major advances towards space flight for the United States, and was the beginning of the company's highly successful rocket dying division. Another test vehicle for Navajo, the X-10, made its first flight in late 1953. The inertial guidance system and flight control system for Navajo sparked the creation of what is now the company's Autonetics Division. 
the X-10 flight was just about 100% perfect. Would you believe percent In late 1955, the Los Angeles Division won a contract to build the X-15. It was to be the world's first combination manned aircraft and spacecraft. In 1956, the Navajo became the first craft to be launched by a large liquid propellant rocket booster. The first time it got off the pad, a pitch rate gyro failure resulted in a spectacular but brief flight. But later that same year, Navajo made its first successful flight. Well, Navajo ended, but the Hound Dog program kept the division busy, and we kept our foot in the space door with a contract to build Little Joe for NASA to test the Mercury space. Yeah, it looks like nice. The company's contribution to space flight was being carried forward brilliantly by the X-15, which made its first flight in 1959 and by Rocketdyne, which was the flying engines for most of the nation's missile program. In 1961, under the new tongue-twister name of Space and Information Systems Division, we won the Apollo and Saturn projects. The early Apollo command module was shaped like a gumdrop with a galley stack that functioned as a periscope to view the moon's surface on land. Now that was a direct landing concept. We turned out mock-ups like they were going out of style. This area became known as TP Village. <laughs> to handle fabrication of the Saturn, a new plant was built in Seal Beach. The command module program moved through hectic periods. Drop test. Flash down, man. Uh, it's not coming up. <laughs> Ruptured heat sheet. Oops. Out of the way, guys. Tests of Earth landing barrier. That happens to be the capsule you see right outside the window here. And more tests. I take it that you had to fall to heavier air before they would billow and deploy, is that what I'm seeing? Yeah. There were abort tests to prove the escape system. <laughs> We're going to rock and roll today. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. But it works. But it works. Yeah. Yeah, one vehicle fatal. There were exhaustive tests in a vacuum chamber with test astronauts simulating, as nearly as possible, the actual duration of an Apollo flight. In 1967, the division name changed again. Now it was Space Division. Parts of the division moved into three new company buildings at Seal Beach. Then, in September, North American Aviation and Rockwell Standard merged to form North American Rockwell. The Apollo 4 launch and suborbital flight in November featured the first flight of the Saturn second stage in the Saturn V stack that carried an all-up Apollo spacecraft into space for the first time. Apollos 5 and 6 had successful flights. And then, in October 1968, Apollo 7 carried Wally Shira, Walt Cunningham, and Don Isley on the first manned Apollo flight. The astronauts literally floated in comfort in their roomy room in the weightlessness of Earth orbital space. Meanwhile, of course, 
we had not deserted our other contributions to manned space flight, such as the paraglider. The Gallo wings that you know today. The second manned Apollo flight, Apollo 8, went into an orbit around the moon. Apollo and Saturn performed flawlessly, and the engine, built by Rocketdyne, powered each stage of that launch vehicle. Apollo 9 proved out the lunar lander concept. Apollo 10's success in approaching to within nine miles of the moon led to the flight of spacecraft 107. Apollo 11, the Columbia, which transported Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Mike Collins to the first landing of man on the surface of the moon, July 20th, 1969. Before the decade was out, Pete Conrad, Al Bean, and Dick Gordon had completed another successful moon landing. As successful Apollo flight after successful flight continued, Space Division was working on a study for the proposed space shuttle. Rocketdyne was working on the shuttle rocket engine. Another group at Space Division was involved the inside with the, of the Apollo Soyuz test project, a joint Soviet-American space flight. In mid-1972, the Division won the contract for the Space Shuttle Orbiter and Shuttle System Management. Apollos 16 and 17 brought that great program to an end. At the end of December 1972, 12 Americans had walked on the moon, taken there and returned safely by Space Division built spacecraft. Early in 1973, the company changed its name again to Rockwell International. But a change in name didn't change plans, and Apollo spacecraft were used in the Skylab Earth Orbital Scientific Flight. The ASTP was proceeding apace with Russian cosmonauts visiting the Space Division for spacecraft familiarization. And actual hardware for shuttle production began to take shape. So that's the tomorrow to which we can look forward. A future using an economical, reusable space transportation system through the 1980s and 1990s. The age of space exploitation. That is, making use of space for the benefit of all mankind.